Hello everybody, uh, this is my first tutorial ever, um, we'll see how this goes. Um, so, uh, it was like a year ago, I made this, uh, this cool background. And I just kind of wanted to make a tutorial uh, showing how to make it. And, you know, you can use it as a desktop background, you can animate it, you can do anything you want with it. Um, also the technique that was used to make it as well. Um, it's pretty simple to make. Um, you know, it's just some, some cubes cloned onto a sphere. Um, texture-wise, it's super easy. It's just white. But really the thing that I think makes this great is the lighting. So, I'm going to explain how to do that. So, opening up Cinema 4D, um, you want to start out by making sure your layout is in Standard. You just go up here into the upper right corner and click Standard to make sure it's the correct thing. Um, so we will start out with a sphere, just like that. Um, let's start by increasing the number of segments to 75, just like that. And then we will add a cube, and the cube will make uh, 10 by 10 by 10, and we'll need to change that later, uh, depending on what we need. Actually, maybe uh, increase the Z to Oops, sorry, uh, 25. So just like that. And then we're going to go to MoGraph, uh, Cloner. We're going to drop the cube inside of the cloner. And then in the cloner, we'll change the mode from linear to uh, object. And then the object that we want to clone onto is the sphere. So we'll do that. So that's a good start. All right, so we've got that. And it's uh, you know a nice uniform look, right? So it looks like rendered pretty much the same, actually. Um, anyway, uh, but we kind of want this random look um, that I had going in the other one, just like that. So what we're going to do is MoGraph Effector Random, and starting to get there. Um, However, we don't want it actually. Uh, we don't want it affecting the position, so just uncheck that. We only want it affecting the scale. Um, these dimensions aren't as important. The one we're really looking at is this little number here. The Z uh, put that at about two. I mean, it looks all right. It can be more. And then you know, just depending on your personal taste, you know, adjust these gives it a nice uh, different look. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the basic shape. Um, if we go into the, uh, the, the effector tab of a random effector, we have different options for the type of noise that we want to use. Um, it's uh, By default, it's set to random, but we can do Gaussian, which gives it just a different kind of look. And I think this is actually what I used before. Although if we're going to use this, we want to crank it up a little bit. Um, go back into there. There's also uh, noise, which actually is a really cool thing. Um, if we animate this, it would be really cool, I think. So yeah. Never mind. Actually, I want to move this. See if you move it, it gives it a kind of cool effect. Anyway, but we're not going to do that now. Um, we're just going to go to Gaussian and leave it as is. Um, now let's take uh, both the cloner and the sphere, select them. We'll rotate them 90 degrees in this direction. Hold the shift key to make it snap in increments of 5 degrees until it's at 90. Just like that. And then we will add a plane and make sure that it clear this. This is just going to be kind of the background. Go up, make it a little bigger. And also if it's just a plane and you're not doing any kind of deformation or anything to it, there's really no need to have more than just one polygon. It only slows the scene down. I have a slight amount, but still a little bit. And do that. Then we will position our camera like this. Actually, before we do anything, let's go up here to your render settings by clicking this button and set this to the resolution of your display. So mine is 2560 by uh, 
1440. So that should be good. Uh, but you just set it to whatever yours is. Um, so there's that. And then hopefully it's visible in the on YouTube, but you can see it's kind of brighter here and it gets darker there. That's the, the, that's the area that'll show up in the render. So we'll kind of position this where we want it. Maybe we want it to be a little smaller in the frame. Just like that. And then uh, scale this guy up to cover the whole frame. And then we'll go to create, new material. In color, it starts out as kind of a gray, but we want it to be plain white. In specular, we'll turn both of these down to something very low. We kind of want it to be matte and not be very shiny looking. We'll apply this to the plane and the cube and the sphere underneath as well. So now, uh, really all that's left is uh, lighting. Actually, really quick, we'll create a camera so we can maintain this view. And if it's black, we're not looking through the camera. If it's white, it is. So we don't want to be looking through the camera. Then we can go outside of it and do everything. But when we need to, we can come back to that same view. Okay. So, looking good. Uh, so right now, we want to mess with the lighting. So, um... I have this thing called Grayscale Grill HDRI Light Kit Pro. And if you have that, it's great. However, if you don't, um, what you can do is just go up here, click Area Light, move it here, uh, rotate it, make it the appropriate size, which is just this and you basically you just do all the same things with the area light that I would tell you to do with uh, a grayscale grill light kit. So that's that. And then we'll do that. Make sure you go uh, select the light and go down here and change shadow to area. And then uh, the intensity control is right here, which we'll be doing, and the color is right here. Pretty much the same thing, same controls as the uh, plugin I'll be using. Anyway, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to do an overhead softbox. Starts out a little large, so uh, bring that down a bit. And we'll also move it down in position. All right. And for this, we want it to be a really faint blue. It doesn't need to be as blue as you think. Just right there, I'll give it, maybe that's a little too much. Right there, I'll give it just about the right amount. So we'll do that. Then we will go in here and add a normal soft box. And then if you're using the area lights, you'll just add another area light and put it in the same position that I'm putting this. So the other soft box is right here. We'll put it, uh, where's our camera? So yeah, if you're using this, you'll want to uncheck scene by camera and scene and editor so you can see what you're doing. And uh, we'll decrease the brightness on this to about 50 as well. To the overhead one, that is, the overhead light. And it's still there, it just hides it from the camera view. Um, and then this softbox, we'll want to move it a little closer to the subject. Uh, also make it a little bit uh, wider. And for this one, we want the color. Also move it, oops, uh, move it up a little bit so it's not really completely to the side, but uh, just a little bit above it. And for this, we're gonna cut one, a little orange tinge, just like that. That should be good. All right, so at this moment, we're probably ready uh, to do our first uh, render. So really quick before that, we want to set up our render settings. So what we want to do is go to Effect Ambient Occlusion. And what this does is in kind of the nooks and crannies, it simulates how light actually acts. Um, it's not necessarily a shadow, 
but it makes it darker in the corner just because there are less light rays that can bounce into the corner, so it makes it look more realistic. Also, we're going to go to Global Illumination. And what this does is, uh, without it turned on, it, a ray, it hits a surface, and then it stops. But this allows it to go any defined number of extra steps, up to eight. Um, so it bounces off of it, and then it hits something else, and then it stops if it were one. If it were two, it would do two things, etc. We'll just leave it at one for now. Um, if you're going to do animation with this, which you may choose to do, it'll take a while to render, but uh, yeah, you're going to want to check uh, this full animation. We'll just leave it at that now because it's a little quicker, and we don't need it to, to be animated. Um, so close out of that. We'll click this button to do our first render, and it takes a bit of time. Also on this, I guess the light is on the right side instead of the left as it was in mine before, but that's not a problem. So we'll wait and we'll wait and we'll wait. And sometimes um, a better thing to do instead of just doing the whole thing is to say render region here. And we'll just uh, draw a little square. And that can kind of give us an idea of how the whole thing is going to look without having to wait. Uh, you know, three minutes for the entire thing to, to render. And we can just do the sections we want to look at. Just like that. Maybe look over here, see how this slide is acting. And that is looking pretty good. See how it looks over here. Maybe one more. Alright, uh, on second thought I've decided maybe it is uh, the lights are a bit too bright. And really, it's just a matter of going through and changing the brightness of all of them, but I'll show you how to do that, or how to get a good looking result, that is. So uh, we'll go out of this camera. Um, first of all, let's make this uh, side light a little more orange. Maybe I underestimated how orange it should be. Right there, maybe. And that's starting to look good. We've got the, the orange on the sides and then the blue. Um, the overhead one, though, I think is still a bit too bright, so we'll go down to about 20. Um, in the original image, it's a, the, the whole thing is kind of darker, that's great. Um, the orange one is also kind of the, the most present, so that's what we're going for here. Um, yeah, this uh, also maybe bring the brightness down to uh, like 75. And then we'll do a render and see of the region and see how that's going for you. It's looking a bit dark, I don't know though. This will take a while to happen. Uh, so yeah. Sometimes you do just need to go through and, and do the whole thing to see how it's going to turn out. Shouldn't be too much longer. And this is the bad thing about global illumination is that it takes a long time to render. So it's starting to come through now. And although it does look a little dark, um, I'm thinking that that's probably what we want, actually. And it's, of course, up to you, but I like how it looks, so I'm going to leave it. So, uh, you know, if, if you want to end there, um, you know, it, it looks good like that, you think? You just go into your render settings, you specify uh, where you want to save the file, uh, the name of the file, and uh, what kind you want. Um, if you're using it for a background, I'd recommend something like a PNG or a TIFF because those at least have uncompressed variants. Um, but yeah, you're pretty much done. Um, you could, however, choose to take it a little bit farther. Uh, maybe it would be cool if there was like a like a purple glowing thing inside of it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, oops, that should not be there. Uh, we'll start out by uh, making both of these red, so you can't see the sphere, but it still has the it's still there to be cloned onto because the cloner looks at the sphere, looks at how many vertices it has, and puts it on there. So don't uncheck this, just make both of these red by clicking each of them twice. Um, so we'll make that go away. We'll then change this to uh, 
I don't know, uh, da -da 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 -da, 50. Just decrease it. And sometimes, okay, there, that time it did. Sometimes it doesn't update, and if it doesn't, you just click the, the cloner, and it should happen. There's a lot of geometry here, so it could take a while, depending on what kind of computer you have. Um, now we'll go out of this camera, and we'll add a normal light in the middle, just by clicking that. Um, we'll make it a nice uh, purple, light purple color, which will look great. Um, uh, by default, the light only shows up on surfaces. So you can only see things that it hits. But uh, with this, we want to actually be able to see uh, the light itself. So what we want to do is go into Visible and click Volumetric and drag its influence in right here, right about there. And then, uh, yeah, that should be good. Uh, we'll start out by turning the brightness up to maybe like 150. And we'll go into the camera. This is all purple, but we'll fix that in a minute. Uh, do this little region. And we'll see how it works. And of course that light can be any color you want it to be. But that's kind of a cool effect. Um, you know, and maybe it would be good, you know, make this even higher. Oops. I don't want to do that. Uh, That. And the more lights and the more intensity of light you have, the longer the global illumination takes, unfortunately. So that's that. Uh, that region is looking good, I think. So right now we want to, uh, I don't like, uh, it's obviously up to you, but I don't like how it's casting uh, this pinkish light now in the background. So what we'll do is we'll go into the light and go to the project tab, and here we can tell it to exclude things from its influence. So we can keep it from casting light on certain objects. So what we'll do is we'll just drag the plane down there and voila, it's gone. Um, yeah, so that is pretty much all I have to do. Of course, all this could be animated and that would look really awesome. Um, of course, it takes a while to render, but you know, maybe it's a good reward. Um, you know, you can go in and you can, you can play with this, uh, you know, just like that. Uh, turbulence gives kind of a different effect too. Sorted, it's kind of more of an even distribution. It's not really random, but of course, if you think that's great, by all means. Anyway, uh, I hoped uh, my first tutorial was reasonably followable. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope that you learned something and uh, have a great day.